Maybe there is, in fact, a third RFK car in the works for 2025. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Decide to wear a suit today. Class the place up a little bit. Show everybody that this is professional journalism at its finest. To let you all know that I mean business. It's not actually why I'm wearing it, but I'm not changing uh, because, well, I have to record this video and then leave. However, what we do need to talk about today is not the fact that I'm wearing a suit, not the fact that I look like a million bucks, and not the fact that tie clips should be mandatory for all ties everywhere and plaid ties always look great. No, what we're here to talk about is Brad Keselowski spoke to the media on Friday at Daytona International Speedway, Martin Truex Jr.'s North Florida home racetrack. And when Bob Pachris asked him, because of course Bob is going to ask, about the rumors that are flying around that RFK could potentially start up a third car for 2025, Brad Keselowski said, well, not today which is, of course, like the most dad joke thing Brad Kozlowski could say. Brad seems like the ultimate dad joke kind of guy. Um, but he did say that, you know, it's a possibility in the future. He said that they run a third car this year, which they have. They ran that stage 60 car uh, for Joey Han, David Reagan, um, as well as uh, the Australian that I'm now blanking on. And it's absolutely blanking. Cam Waters, that guy, the... The other Shane Van Gisbergen will just consider all Australians to be the same. They're not. Don't come at me, Australia or New Zealand. I do know that those two are separate and they don't like to be compared to one another or at least called the, you know, the, the other. So they have run that car uh, at multiple times this year. And now, of course, rumors are circulating that RFK could be possibly potentially maybe starting up a third car for 2025. There is a rumor or not a rumor, but a story rather posted by the Sports Business Journal last week uh, that said that RFK Racing is the favorite to land the Kroger sponsorship as it departs JTG Doherty Racing at the end of the year. That is a big time get. That is like a 36-ish race sponsor, uh, maybe give or take a race or two here or there. That's big time money. That's a Fortune 100 company. That is a huge get for RFK Racing after it seemed like it was probably headed to Joe Gibbs Racing at the beginning of the year when these rumors started to come out. Now it's going over to RFK. That gives them so much sponsorship that maybe they do have to start up a third car just so they have enough inventory for all the sponsorship that they have or enough race inventory for all the sponsorship that they have. Now the question comes, well, what about the charter situation? So we know that the uh, Stuart Haas Racing fire sale Gene Haas is holding on to one of those um, charters. One of those went to Front Row Motorsports. The other two are expected to go to Trackhouse and 2311 Racing. So there doesn't seem to be a charter on the market. There could be. There's maybe some rumors out there that a charter could be for sale. But let's assume that that's not. Let's assume that they're going to run an open car. Is that feasible? Well, according to Brad Keselowski, when he spoke to Bob Hawkers, it is. Take a listen to what Brad had to say real quick. Are you ready to start 13? Uh, not today, but hopefully soon. Yeah, so we should, I mean, would it, could you run a third car unchartered? Yeah, I'd say anything's on the table. Okay. Well, we did this year, not full time. But yeah, but you could if the sponsorship is enough that that's Absolutely. for what we're hearing potentially. You could. Yeah, nothing's off the table. Right. So obviously, if Brad does not get a third charter, if RFK Racing doesn't get a third charter, they have to run this as an open car, which essentially means that they're not guaranteed a starting spot for every race, and they're not guaranteed the same monetary payout that the charter teams are as well. So essentially, you're racing for less money than the other cars on track. But if you have an abundance of sponsorship that can help cover those costs, then you don't have to worry about the winnings and the you know the prize payout as much. You want to trust me, you want that money, and no race teams going to turn away money. But if you have to do it and kind of bootstrap it, you can. We saw JTG Doherty Racing do this a few years ago when they got rid of, well, they were leasing a charter and then it went away, the 37 car, Ryan Priest. They raced that car unchartered. Ultimately didn't last because, well, it just doesn't really make economic sense. If Brad Keselowski and the RFK team can figure out a way for it to make economic sense, then I think you could probably maybe see one out there uh, in 2025, a third car, that is. Who would the driver be? Well, in that uh, Sports Business Journal, article that Adam Stern wrote where he mentioned the RFK to or Kroger to RFK uh, story. Ryan Priest's name was brought up in there. And that has immediately I love Ryan Priest fans. I think you guys are great. I love that drivers have these passionate fan groups. Ryan Priest has this hardcore group of fans. I'm assuming maybe probably from the Northeast that are diehards and they want to know where Ryan Priest is going at all times. They think that RFK should absolutely start up a third team for for Ryan Priest. I think Ryan Priest is a nice guy. I think Ryan Priest is a really talented modified driver. I don't necessarily think that Ryan Priest is a guy that you start a third car around. I just don't think that he is that talent level. Talented guy, but at the Cup Series, we just haven't really seen that. And I know he's only been with JTG Doherty. He's only been um, with, with SHR. I get it. I understand what, you, what people are going to say here. But man, if you have Zane Smith out there, which of course his name has been heavily linked to front row uh, motorsports, 
and likely is headed over there. But if you could find a way to steal Zane, I think that's the move that you have to that you have to make. It just makes all the sense in the world. Um, and Brad obviously has thought high of him before because he has raced for Arf. So I think it's a toss up there between Ryan Priest and and Zane Smith. Those are really realistically the only two names that have really popped up for it. Ryan Priest's name continues to be heavily, heavily favored. Uh, he, of course, does have a previous relationship with Kroger when he was at JTG. Same with uh, Chris Buescher, former relationship with Kroger as well. It will be interesting to see if they run a third car on Chartered. We've heard Justin Marks say in the past that it was feasible. Dale Jr., uh, he's kind of beat around the bush and seemingly thinks it could possibly be possible. Uh, I just don't know economically if it makes a lot of sense beyond one year. Now, of course, RFK can still lease a charter as well. They could lease one from Rick Ware Racing or whoever else wanted to lease them a charter uh, for next season. Uh, just owning one is a lot better. But if there's none to own, then maybe you look at the lease. Maybe you look at the unchartered car entry. However, Brad didn't shy away from the question, didn't say no, so it does seem like there could be heavy wheels in motion for this. So let me know in the comments what you think about the possibility of Brad Keselowski RFK Racing starting up a third car next year, who you think is going to drive it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at BreakHardBlog.